Hello. Uh, I'm Kanya Clayton. I'm going to read uh, HD, Hilda Doolittle. Thank you, Isabella, for uh, thinking of me to be a part of this. I'm really honored to read alongside so many people that I admire a lot and to be a part of this really cool series. So um, I love HD and uh, it feels timely right now to read some of the sections from The Flowering of the Rod, which she wrote in uh, 1944. I'm gonna read the first nine sections. It's a very, very long poem. So here we go. The Flowering of the Rod to Norman Holmes Pearson. Pause to give thanks that we rise again from death and live. One. Oh, the beautiful garment, the beautiful raiment. Do not think of his face or even his hands. Do not think how we will stand before him. Remember the snow on Hermon. Do not look below where the blue gentian reflects geometric pattern in the ice flow. Do not be beguiled by the geometry of perfection. For even now, the terrible banner darkens the bridgehead. We have shown that we could stand. We have withstood the anger, frustration, bitter fire of destruction. Leave the smoldering cities below. We have done all we could. We have given until we have no more to give. Alas, it was pity rather than love we gave. Now, having given all, let us leave all. Above all, let us leave pity and mount higher to love. Resurrection. Two. I go where I love and where I am loved, into the snow. I go to the things I love with no thought of duty or pity. I go where I belong, inexorably, as the rain that has lain long in the furrow. I have given or would have given life to the grain, but if it will not grow or ripen with the rain of beauty, the rain will return to the cloud. The harvester sharpens his steel on the stone, but this is not our field. We have not sown this. Pitiless, pitiless, let us leave the place of a skull to those who have fashioned it. Three. In resurrection, there is confusion. If we start to argue, if we stand and stare, if we do not know where to go, in resurrection, there is simple affirmation. But do not delay to round up the others, up and down the street. Your going in a moment like this is the best proof that you know the way. Does the first wild goose stop to complain to the others? No, he is off. They follow or not, that is their affair. Does the first wild goose care whether the others follow or not? I don't think so. He is so happy to be off. He knows where he was going. So we must be drawn or we must fly, like the snow geese of the Arctic Circle, to the Carolinas or to Florida, or like those migratory flocks who still, they say, hover over the lost island, Atlantis, sinking what we once knew. We know ultimately we will find happiness. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Four. Blue geese, white geese, you may say, yes, I know this duality, this double nostalgia. I know the insatiable longing in winter for palm shadow and sand and burnt sea drift. But in the summer, as I watch the wave till its edge of foam touches the hot sand and instantly vanishes like snow on the equator, I would cry out, stay, stay. Then I remember delicate enduring frost and its midwinter dawn pattern. In the hot noon sun, I think of the gray opalescent winter dawn as the wave burns on the shingle 
I think you are less beautiful than frost. But it is also true that I pray. Oh, give me burning blue and brittle burnt seaweed above the tide line. As I stand still unsatisfied under the long shadow on snow of the pine. Five. Satisfied, unsatisfied, satiated or numb with hunger. This is the eternal urge. This is the despair. This is the desire to equilibrate, the eternal variant. You understand that insistent calling, that demand of a given moment, the will to enjoy, the will to live, not merely the will to endure, the will to flight, the will to achievement, the will to rest after long flight. But who knows the desperate urge of those others, actual or perhaps now mythical birds, who seek but find no rest till they drop from the highest point of the spiral or fall from the innermost center of the ever narrowing circle. For they remember, they remember, as they sway and hover what once was. They remember, they remember, they will not swerve. They have no bliss, the fruit that satisfies. They have come back. What if the islands are lost? What if the waters cover the Hesperides? They would rather remember, remember the golden apple trees. Oh, do not pity them as you watch them drop one by one. For they fall exhausted, numb, blind, but in certain ecstasy. For theirs is the hunger for paradise. Six. So, I would rather drown, remembering, than bask on tropic atolls in the coral seas. I would rather drown, remembering, than rest on pine or fir branch, where great stars pour down their generating strength, Arcturus or the sapphires of the northern crown. I would rather beat in the wind, crying to those others, yours is the more foolish circling, Yours is the most senseless wheeling, round and round. Yours has no reason. I am seeking heaven. Yours has no vision. I see what is beneath me, what is above me. What men say is not. I remember, I remember, I remember. You have forgot. You think, even before it is half over, that your cycle is at an end. But you repeat your foolish circling again, again, again. Again, the steel sharpened on the stone. Again, the pyramid of skulls. I gave pity to the dead. Oh, blasphemy, pity is a stone for bread. Only love is holy, and love's ecstasy that turns and turns and turns about one center, reckless, regardless, blind to reality that knows the islands of the blessed are there, for many waters cannot quench love's fire. 7. Yet resurrection is a sense of direction. Resurrection is a beeline, straight to the hoard and plunder, the treasure, the storeroom, the honeycomb. Resurrection is remuneration, food, shelter, fragrance of myrrh and balm, Eight, I am so happy. I am the first or the last of a flock or a swarm. I am full of new wine. I am branded with a word. I am burnt with wood, drawn from glowing ember, not cut, not marked with steel. I am the first or the last to renounce iron, steel, metal. I have gone forward. I have gone backward. I have gone onward from bronze and iron into the golden age. Nine. No poetic fantasy, but biological reality. A fact. I am an entity like bird, insect, plant, or sea plant cell. I live. I am alive. Take care. 
Do not know me. Deny me. Do not recognize me. Shun me. For this reality is infectious. Ecstasy. Thank you. You should uh, read the rest of it. It's really, really good. Uh, thank you so much, Isabella, and thanks to everyone who watched. Can't wait to uh, watch the rest of these myself. Take care.